Okay, greetings everyone. As I'm looking about what's going on and thinking also as a psychiatrist, I'm studying a little bit about the dangers of social distancing, which are really a form of social isolation. And what we have learned over the years, particularly from prisoners of war who have been socially isolated or people put in solitary confinement, is that it's very, very damaging to the brain function, to learning, to uh, really every level of brain function and, and, and also in terms of uh, depression, anxiety, suicide. Now, that's adults. The story gets more serious in children, okay? Whereas adults, the research is kind of suggesting the fatality rate, there is one, the fatality rate is really about 0.1%, roughly speaking. Some people say maybe 0.2%. It's, 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 it's equivalent of a bad flu, nowhere near as the fatality rate uh, in adults, uh, you know, with Ebola or SARS. That being said, the fatality rate in children is zero. Children under 10, zero. Really, people under 20 is zero. Now, that's a wake-up call. Uh, but I'm not really... Ready to stop it. Okay, that's a little bit of a wake-up call here. Now, uh, literally, it's always good to play that way. I didn't plan that. Now, in children, we are talking that social isolation can actually very negatively affect brain development, brain structure, and actually brain function. Now, the thing that's a little scary is it's not necessarily reversible, okay? That's true in adults, too. So, we have a situation where there literally is zero fatality risk, but major league. Now, what's major league? In Afro-Americans, uh, it, it's a double the rate, the, the damage. And in Caucasians, it's uh, 64 to about 80% 80 rate. That's very significant that it really get adverse effects. So we should think very carefully as this psychological psyop uh, thing is going on uh, based on what we know about prisoners of war, based uh, uh, in terms of how adversely they're affected by the social isolation that if we start doing it with our children, you know, I have three grandchildren. Unfortunately, I have, they have great parents. They're not socially isolated per se, uh, because even though they aren't in school, they're communicating and family life, which is, which is very good. But what we're looking at is the danger of prolonged social isolation. So in terms of the, the children or the grandchildren, we should think very, very carefully uh, about their idea of shutting down schools. We need to keep the schools open. Um, again, remember, zero fatalities, you know, uh, in children under 10, really, and in, in adults under 20, really worth considering. But the bigger picture, besides our children and grandchildren, is actually its effect on society. And what we see is when people become socially isolated, not as the more depression and suicide, but people's ability to relate to each other is broken down. The, for example, the six foot distancing, of which there is absolutely no, absolutely no scientific evidence to show it makes any difference, okay, is again a form of social isolation. And we can look around and look at the countries where they didn't have a shutdown. You know, Sweden, 
Japan, particularly in Tokyo, and um, Belarus, and they did equal to or even slightly better in terms of uh, fatalities than places where they had to shut down. So we always look as a, a doctor, I look at risk benefit, okay? Actually, it's a higher risk to have a shutdown. Now, again, when they compare countries where there wasn't a shutdown versus when there was or is, they have an equal amount, roughly speaking, of fatality. So I just want to say that. The data isn't perfect, but that it's clear enough to say that. Okay? So by not doing a shutdown, we take away the downside risk of greatly accelerated suicides, which is happening, and drugs, and uh, spousal abuse, and child abuse, okay? And we also minimize the very, very detrimental effects of social isolation, which affects us physically, emotionally, and mentally on every level. I mean, increased heart disease, decreased longevity, decreased well-being. They know when kids are socially isolated, they actually don't live as long in general. So we need to look at this far more seriously than, uh, let's say, some of the officials are doing and understanding that another lockdown could actually have very, very se severe consequences on our society and on the mental health of all the peoples, not just in America, but around the world. So may, with this information, we begin to have some compassion on ourselves. And also, we have enough science now to know what actually is working, what isn't. So we need to make and, and stay by decisions that uh, the, the risk benefit is a minimal rather than a maximal situation. And in this context, may everyone be blessed that we make the right decisions to elevate our society rather than to downgrade it. Peace be with you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Om shanti, shanti, shanti. Om takyasana. And then go ahead and meditate. I know it's not the best uh, uh, message, but it's a message that allows us some uh, very thoughtful uh, ability to make choices in our lives. Peace be with you.